Hi guys, so this will be a quick video showing you how you can get more accurate terrain elevation data inside of uh, EGCS. So you can see I have uh, a route planned here already. So this is a LiDAR area uh, and this is currently in the uh, northern uh, California area. So now in GCS, by default, we are using uh, SRTM one arc second terrain elevation data. So if you go in here into the uh, map layers window and then go into elevation, so you can now see that we are using SRTM one arc second uh, data. However, uh, there are some places where this data actually is not accurate uh, enough or you can get a higher degree of accuracy. So. Uh, if I just now trigger the visibility of this route off and I zoom in so you can see how the terrain looks here So should be okay for most flights But especially if you want to fly at lower altitude in some cases You might want to have even more accurate terrain elevation data to be able to get better uh, Resulting data from your missions and so now I'm just gonna show you how you can quickly do that This uh, tutorial will concern those specifically located in the United States because I'm gonna be using the uh, USGS uh, website for this but if you are in another country then uh, this still applies because you can then just use other services which are specific to your country so you can also get uh, better terrain data for your drone missions okay so first step here is that we now need to take our uh, route and export it into a KML file so the KML file will just allow us to more easily navigate uh, on the uh, USGS site so we can uh, find the exact region in which uh, we want to get an accurate uh, digital elevation model so to export the route, you can just click here on these three dots on your planned route, then click on uh, export, then select KML, and then here, uh, make sure the altitude is set as AMSL and the format as line string. Then let's click on next and just click on save. And so now the KML file is already exported. Now, with that done, we can move on into the USGS site. So this is how the USGS site looks like. You can see the domain is apps.nationalmap.gov slash downloader. And so if you go to that site, then you should see something like this. The link also will be in the video uh, description. So now let's start by importing our KML file uh, in here. So to do that, just click here on upload uh, KML and then choose file. Then let's select uh, the route which we want to uh, upload and so now you can see that the KML file is actually displayed in here on the map. And so now uh, we can't use the KML file yet because it still requires us to draw some polygon around it. But that's very easy to do. So now let's just click here on the uh, polygon and then we can just uh, draw around it like so. Uh, hit enter to complete the figure and that's it. Uh, in the next step now, we need to select which uh, products we are interested in. So in our case, we want to have the elevation products, so the 3D EP maps. And uh, the most accurate one here would be the 1 meter DEM. So uh, 1 arc second DEM, which is what is used inside of EGCS uh, by default, this means that the distance between elevation points is 30 meters. So a 1 meter DEM instead means you get 30 times better accuracy. So uh, with this selected, if you want, you can also click here on show. So this will also display the areas on the map where the uh, one meter DM is available. And actually this, these are usually quite large areas are all over the United States. In the worst case, you can uh, still select also one third arc second and one ninth arc second data. This will still be more accurate, but not as accurate as one meter. So one meter is kind of the one you are after. And so then with this one selected, just click here on search products. So now you can see it does its search and it has found a map tile or an elevation tile, which we can use. So now if you zoom out and then select that, so now you can actually see which uh, region this is. So in case that your route or the overall area which you want to scan, if it crosses multiple tiles, then you will see actually multiple products. That's why in the previous step, it's important that you mark out all of the area uh, which you are trying to survey with a drone. So but anyways, now with this uh, product here selected, we can go here on uh, download and just click on that. And then uh, this will be downloaded. And so now once the download finishes, that's already the next step when we go into GCS and I'll show you how you can import that. And so now we are uh, back into GCS. And then what you need to do is again, go here into the map layers window. And so this is where we're gonna import our uh, newly downloaded uh, digital elevation model. 
So just go into the elevation tab and then click here on the plus button to add a new uh, elevation model. So we can uh, add some name for it. So this could, for example, be DEM uh, underscore one meter. Also could specify where it is. In this case, it's in California. So uh, I just added that here as well. So click on create and then just uh, click on the upload button and select your file. So you can see that the uh, downloaded file is here. So it's with the .tif extension, it's a GOT file. And uh, yeah, with it selected, just click on open and you can now see that the GCS is already uploading that to the uh, Geo server. Okay, and so now the file has finished uh, importing. You can see that this icon uh, of this map layer now looks uh, filled out. So that's one of the indicators how you know that it has uh, finished. And actually, let's take a look at uh, this. So before we add this into the enabled map sources, I'll just uh, trigger the root visibility off and let's maybe zoom in on some area just so we can have um, a good comparison to see how it was before and how it will be after. So for example, now you can see that here right after this uh, intersection here, there is a hill and also if you move then a bit on some other direction of the road, for example here, so you can see that the road, it's not straight at all, so it's set at a slope. And so these are the consequences of when uh, you're using less accurate elevation uh, data in these cases. So now let's uh, just click here on this arrow. And so this will then add this one meter uh, digital elevation model into the active uh, layers. You can see also, by the way, that now once it's here, then this whole map tile now is actually highlighted in green color just to show you the exact area where uh, this elevation data is. And so now we can actually zoom in on some uh, area that's here. I'll just click here so uh, to remove the uh, green color. And so now if we zoom in here, you can actually see how it all looks like. And so you can see that in this elevation uh, data layer, so that the road is completely flat, flat as it should be. And so the mountain ends also very near to the road. So another thing which uh, I usually like to do at uh, this stage is that you can also see how different uh, map overlays look on this elevation model because certain maps also might have some uh, deviation of uh, one or two meters. So let's, uh, for example, now compare Bing maps. So how Bing maps looks like in comparison to Google. And so here you can also see uh, the, the difference. Uh, it's up to you, I guess, to judge which one uh, looks better in this case. Uh, in this specific area, I think both of them look uh, quite good. And also, by the way, in case you have your own maps, which you want to import or maps from some public source, then very similarly to how we just now imported the elevation, you can actually do the same with map layers. We can see that here on the Google Maps, for example, this one white line, so it's a bit already uh, over the edge of the hill. And if we switch on over to Bing Maps, at least here, I think it looks a bit more accurate in this area. So maybe I will be using uh, Bing Maps in here. And actually to compare the level of detail between the default one arc second and the new elevation layer, let's maybe remove this again. And so we can see in this specific area, you can see that basically it's just you know a slope that goes from top of the hill down. But once we import this, you can see that actually, in fact, in this specific area, looks like the road is on a higher level than the areas on the uh, sides of the uh, road. And so this, if you're using a less accurate elevation uh, data model, then you will not really see that. Another interesting comparison we can do is how the uh, elevation profile of our route looks like. So now uh, to open up the elevation profile of our planned LiDAR route, we can click here on elevation profile. And so now this is displayed. So you can see all of the different changes in terrain elevation and GCS actually is now able to follow this. If we go in here and then again, uh, trigger this map layer off, or instead we can just lower its priority, but I'll just turn it off. And so now you should actually see that once the route is recalculated, so how much less detail we now see. Uh, and uh, let's now add it back. One last thing now I want to show you is how you can actually change the accuracy at which GCS is following uh, the uh, terrain. So you can see here in the LiDAR area, I have the AGL tolerance parameter, which is under advanced parameters. It's currently set to three. So this means that for every three meter change in elevation, GCS will add one waypoint. Uh, if we look here where we have the waypoint count, currently it's at 163 waypoints. And if we wanted the drone to follow the terrain even more accurately, we can change it to even something like a one meter. So now for every one meter change in elevation, GCS will add a waypoint, which will make the drone uh, follow the terrain even more accurately.
and that's it for this video. So hopefully it was useful uh, to see how you can get even more accurate terrain elevation data, which in result can allow you to gather even more precise data from the drone and make your missions even safer. So thank you and see you in the next video.